building a match and the tallest flag in Kyiv or in all of Ukraine. Ray, where are we this morning? First stop of day two. Where are the, where are the Hardings? <laughs> what hard. shirt is that? It's a vintage 2009 third orange with an old logo. And obviously, obviously, we are here at the almighty Oblon. The museum of FC Oblon kids. That's the very first kid apparently from 1993. It used to be a women national team kit, which just <laughs> they brought to and put an Oblon advert on it. This is the vintage kit from 2003, same design as Dynamo from the 90s. There are a lot of materials of the history of Oblon. Some absolute vintage strips exactly. here. Got a few of them. Golden one out with a different sponsor. I got this one. Ray's very shirt that he's wearing right oh, there. Oh, FC Oblon Cave were founded in 1992, starting off as FC Zmina before changing their name to the district that the club plays in in Northern Cave, not after the beer. However, the beer company, which is renowned throughout the world, has been an official sponsor of the club since 1999. And the club's honorary president, Alexander Strobodian, is the president of the Obolov Beer Company. For the majority of its history, they've been playing in the lower leagues, but have had a few appearances in the UPL and the Bistra Liga. And they play at the well-known Obolov Arena in Northern Kyiv. That was Oblon Arena. Ray giving us a bit of a guided tour. Ray loving it. Assistant manager just took our photos. Not bad. Club toilet here at Dinaz. And here we are, FC Dinaz. In Ukrainian, FC Dinosaur. Uh, Vishhorod. So we're north, just north of Kiev city. Still in Kiev Oblast. Building the future. Slightly more built up than Stavistra. Not bad. <laughs> so FC Dinosaur, here up in northern part of Kiev Oblast, have been around since 1999. However, they only turned pro in 2019. So they've been a well-known entity in the amateur leagues and only went up the next level a few years ago. This is actually their second stadium, a much smaller one than their main one, which is in a nearby village of Luchiv, which is about a thousand capacity. This one's only 500. We spoke to the nice groundskeeper there who let us in, but ultimately uh, still a relatively young club in the professional game. Highway. What are you eating? Ponche. Right. And what is a ponche? Donuts. I don't know if you can see in that. Proper vanilla donuts, just like the old fairground days. We got them from Ponche Cheboretke Blinchike. Essentially, uh, Adam claims these are the best donuts he's ever had, so. Gonna look, I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out if that's true. A little bit of a taste test then, eh? Mm. Battling with the wind here. A random band's park if you have But, we're chocolate donut. Doesn't taste too chocolatey, but pretty decent. Ray, you having a chebrek? What is a chebrek? Chebrek is with uh, beef, I believe. But what is it? Just pastry? It's with like meat. A, it's a Ukrainian Very thin pasty. Layer. Ukrainian mm. pasty. It is. Tastes nice? It, it does.
the journey west began and we were in Jitomer. Sadly, Polisa Jitomer, who call this lovely stadium Centralny home, were playing away that weekend. So we couldn't speak to anyone at the club as all of them were on that trip. However, we still got to see the brand new stadium, recently reopened due to renovation works which took place over the course of 15 years. We met the stadium director who was very weird and skeptical as to us filming, asking us, who are you from? Who are you working for? And not to film a hole in the ground that someone was digging over there. However, expect big things from the club itself due to their financing by supermarket billionaire Henedy Butkevich. Uh, Where are you right now, Adam? We're at the home of football, mate. Home of football. It's a theatre of dreams. Yeah, there is place. It's the spiritual home for the club where all the fans congregate. Away games, this is the place to come. When the home games, because obviously Verez haven't played in Rivna for a number of years now. All the buses that are provided by the fan clubs will meet here and take everybody this year to Lutz, the last few years, down there to Millennium. So, it's great to be home. What makes this uh, Veres quite unique in Ukrainian football? How about how the fans have rebuilt the club over the last, what, four or five years and the way that the fans are involved in pretty much everything and what Veres place means to the supporters in, in Rivna? Our club gains a lot of attention from fans all over, thanks to our red and black colours. We're great representatives of Western Ukraine, and the colours are our symbol, our united journey. It's our unique growth, which does not only attract fans from Marivna Oblast, but also from across Western Ukraine, Central, Eastern regions too. The most seismic moment in our recent history that has aided our club's popularity nationwide is the signing of popular YouTube vlogger Mitro Povoroznyuk as a player. He filmed a series as to what it's like to be a footballer. He showed what life's like inside the team, all the sides of a football club, the emotions, what was going on in the changing rooms, content which has never been seen before in Ukrainian football. And it's the series that helped to create a very positive image for the club, for supporters across the country, that now the club's in the UPL, it's trying to maintain that. And I think that the club hierarchy is trying all it can to allow it to continue to develop in a positive way. There's also another way that supporters are being enticed to be closer to the club, and that's having the club enter the stock exchange via the selling of shares in the club, which the club opened for fans to buy in the previous winter. Now, every Veris supporter can not only be a fan, but they can also join the club family via the purchase of shares, become a co-owner of the club, and then in the future, make decisions on the fate of the future of the club. Building site. Where are we, Adam? We're at the Mini Coliseum. Right, what are, where are we actually? <laughs> quite, an, quite an impressive ground for Veris. I don't know how stadium, legend of the ground. Being rebuilt, yeah. and the intention is for it to be opened in the second half of the season. So the plan is for them to open one or two of the sectors inside the stadium each year so that they, the fans don't have to go to the circus. 
Bulls anymore. About 70 kilometers away from here. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the you know what. <laughs> but the, the Bulls Stadium won't be complete until autumn 2022. You can see behind us. Where are we today, Ray? Or oh, right now? Dead in woods. Last, last leg of day two of the tour. Famous artist called. I remember that stand right there very well from 2019. <laughs> Ah, the last time I was here, Sector 10 was on fire and I was standing just on the edge there. What an evening that was, kind of Pativel in, great derby, smoke all the way there, players, are, players on the pitch, fans on the pitch, fans throwing chairs at the ref, awesome. seen the stadium now we're going inside there's the club bus I, I don't know uh, maybe Friday Friday evening Park of Glory there, there will be some party here's like their gallery photo gallery inside their main entrance straight through straight up there and then out to the pitch pretty cool <laughs> All the players that the club have pulled through Hachiridi, Tim Stuk, Luzhny, Devic, Shevchuk, Nahornyak, some all time greats. And here's the press conference room. Uh, here we are in Lutsk, beautiful Lutsk. Volin is one of the you know, famous historic clubs of the UPL over the years, uh, uh, across the leagues. How do you feel the situation is with football here in Volin Oblast, with uh, Volin Lutsk, and are you optimistic for how it's going to be over the next 30 years? Um. And what I can say about uh, uh, Volin football, uh, here are maybe not a lot of fans uh, at the stadium uh, uh, when, uh, when here is a match, a game, uh, but uh, I know that a uh, few thousand people here in Lutsk are real fans of football. Maybe they uh, are disappointed the last years with the first league, uh, with uh, not uh, successful games uh, but uh, maybe they uh, they are not uh, at the stadium mm -hmm. a lot of them uh, but uh, they are active in uh, some uh, 
for example, Facebook, uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. and they are commenting, criticize, um, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, optimistic of all in football is now, because uh, there are many youngsters who play in the first league with professionals. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, another time they uh, wouldn't uh, have this chance. Maybe U19, uh, second league and so on. But now they have this chance and uh, two first games uh, they uh, make some, some a little miracle uh, and uh, people are very satisfied uh, mm -hmm. with these games. Uh, and I think uh, that Volin is a brand and the main is uh, that uh, there are no Nipro now. We don't know. Is current metalist a real metalist? Uh, we don't know for some uh, and other teams, uh, but Voli uh, didn't uh, disappear from Ukrainian football map mm -hmm. uh, never after 1960. And uh, that's the main, and I hope that Voli. Uh, was in Ukrainian football, is now in Ukrainian football, and will be for many, many years. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Random in the Sticks Hotel. Hotel Alex. Three man. A bit fancy, a bit dark in here as well, but hey ho. Alright, shower. And there's a kitchen. Mm, all right, sleep six, seven hours on the road. Hotel Alex, goodbye. Guys, well, giving it a bit of a today. Gorgeous. We're in the most fighting town in the whole of Ukraine. <laughs> Don't mention Volin in here. Looking forward to it. Welcome to Stadion Unist. Volaches. The Khmelnytsky Oblast town of Volochysk is home to Petrali Hasid Akrobiznis. And whilst here, we had the privilege of having a chat with UPL legend and current Akro manager. Alexander Chizhevsky. The UPL's all-time appearance table is named in his honour after he was the first player to play in 400 top-flight matches. 
Since retiring in 2009, his tally of 401 games has been surpassed by just three players. I mean, for the people in Volochesk, how important is the football club for the community here? You've got to understand that Volochisk is a small town, 20,000 population, and to have such a club on a professional level, and for two years in a row fight for promotion, it's a big deal. We missed out just on the UPL. Of course, for such a small town, the club is a big meaning. In the grand scheme of things, they live by football here, because there's not much else to do or go. Football is like Christmas, it's a celebration, more so, when we beat Vorskla last year and Shakhtar in the cup, people reveled in this. Unfortunately, we lost in the semi-final, but we made a huge step forward anyway for the town. Take a faraway place and they've likely not heard of Volochisk. But when we beat Shakhtar, everyone was talking about us. And the more games like that, the more people will know about the town as a whole. You have the record for the most amount of appearances in Ukrainian football ever since independence 30 years ago. For you personally, what have you seen as the biggest changes in football over those 30 years? Back in the day, even during the Soviet times, football was in the bigger oblast towns and cities. Then started the time when big football in the cities started to die because businessmen came about and started making football clubs in smaller towns and villages, such as Petrova, where Inholets are based, Koloskovalivka, Agrobusiness, and many newer sides in the Druhaliha are also starting up via similar ways. They're professional sides because people love football and the ones that are ready to invest in their clubs want to develop Ukrainian football for the better. Big respect to those people who want to finance. However, the main problem is that the big cities are dying, football-wise. A huge problem because that's where the government money is centred. But at the moment, sadly, the government can't give much money for football. But sooner or later, anyway, football will be resurrected in those cities. Plus, small towns will also be able to compete with them at the same time. Well, to start, let's analyse the national team's performance at the Euros. They played well and entered the history books. Everyone understands that now they've made a step forward, it's time to make more steps to ensure you carry on going up. First of all, I think you need to review football in smaller towns so that in the future you can tap up talent easier from them because it's in towns like this that there's always talent to be unearthed. This needs to be developed. It will be an additional positive when these players will end up playing for the UPL clubs and then move on to the national team if so may be. The more processes we have like this to develop our football, the better we will become in pro football terms. There will be a bigger selection of domestic players and a lot less impetus on foreign ones. And here's the training ground of Agro Business. Just behind those trees is the stadium. And there's the president's house. And there is where Oleg Sobutsky lives, the president of Agro Business. Welcome to Ternopil. Stadium in the back, tanks in the front. Where are we? Well, we're in Fine Misto Ternopil. And here's the stadium. Multicoloured seats, renovated ahead of Euro 2012. Tacked as a training base, but wasn't used in the end.
Lovely. This is where the 2021 Ukrainian Cup final was held. Dinamo beat Zoria here. There were loads of fans that weren't allowed in up on that building up there. Amazing, eh? Look at this. Perfect weather. Never turn up your play here. Down in the tunnel. Free access, people can just come in and run. City Stadium. World-renowned football scouting software and player stats database Wisecout is used by clubs and leagues the world over. One of their global offices can even be found in Ternopil. Whilst in town, we were invited to visit them. But the Italian company came to Ukraine due to lower salaries and a workforce passionate about football. than now because <laughs> because uh, I must feel just yeah Can I, I mean this is something we talk about do you think uh, people are aware about how much detail goes into the analytics of football do you think the general public are aware of it no it's uh, it's information for scouting for clubs for And do you have more people to film the games also? So like they're watching. No, obviously we're just doing uh, statistics. Right. We're trying to analyze the games and send the data into our servers, and then plot taking the our services, buying accounts, having access to the stats, having access to the data. I watch that. That how it works. Not much time because we're speeding to Lviv right now, but you can't not come to Ukraine and try something new from McDonald's, eh? So what are we going for? Well, spicy nuggets. Spicy nuggets. And basically, the ones in the UK that, that came out last year were absolute crap in my opinion. So let's see if these are any better. Plain, no sauce. Still nothing. Still nothing overly flavoursome or even spicy about it in my opinion. With this sweet chilli sauce though. Mm. That hits the spot. Dang. Arena Lviv, we're here to visit Ruch and FC. 
but Rook are playing today against Veres, who we saw yesterday. Slightly late kickoff, I think it's already happened, or it's about to. London. Press. All four of us. Thanks, shout out Max at Rook for sorting us out. That was the first half. Mental. <laughs> but I saw some of this. 2 1. <laughs> on full time. Not the best match in the world. All the action in the first half. Pit side. Pit side. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh my god. <laughs> I have one, I have one already, thank you. Yeah. Okay, okay. He's got the, he's got our feet. Uh. <laughs> It just feels so good to be here. The tech crew on tour. Lviv's newest uh, startup company. <laughs> Oh. U plus F. Let's go eat. Bye. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're in a new concept restaurant in Libya. They love these restaurants <laughs> and let me just... I think it's all time. The music was timed, the cook was timed, the order was timed. Basically, you have to give the chef, a chef comes up to you and you have to tell them ingredients of what you fancy and they will cook something random for you and bring it out to you. So, in exciting stuff. I ordered some chicken, said I wanted it spicy and something wanted something creative with potatoes. So we'll see what happens. Ray, get ready to translate. I got a good one for you. Can you get some um, uh, chicken fried? <laughs> chili, spicy chilies. Um, with some lime in there. Okay. Can I get some um, like mozzarella cheese? Some mozzarella. Sodium cheese, Georgian cheese. Sodium cheese, Georgian cheese. Yeah, sure. Something that, something that really melts. Tosha, tosha, tani. But then, but then, can I, can I also get some like uh, bit of brie from it as well? Uh, bit of brie. Adam for banter. What did you order? I asked for fried chicken, cheese. Uh, chilies, some salad, uh, rucola and tomatoes, uh, with some lime in it. I was expecting something Mexican looking. And now he's got a pub dinner. Stuffed cheese balls <laughs> and uh, lovely spicy sauce and some chicken. Oh, that's quite basic. <laughs> Ray, what did you order? Uh, a few, uh, few types of cheese, coloured uh, tomatoes which were baked, and rucola. And you ordered a beef stroganoff and you got beef stroganoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I ordered some spicy chicken with some creative potatoes. <laughs> spicy? That's super spicy! <laughs> and uh, I ordered that. So I'm finished. Finished it, but the best meal I've ever had. Was it amazing? 
Probably not. I don't even know what it's going to cost yet, so we'll see if that's even worth um, worth rating. It's great concept, but maybe a slightly underdosed execution. In my opinion, maybe it was the ingredients. I don't know, but hey ho. To round off the evening, we headed to Cantonar Pub, the number one Man United fan pub in Lviv, maybe in the whole country, you could say. But it's also a Karpate pub too. Nice fusion, lots of memorabilia all over the walls, Karpate, old vintage stuff, scarves, stickers, also United gear everywhere, all the glasses and the signage and all you can want. Great owners, got Andy, Cat, and you also got this Coventry drum that was donated by the Coventry boys back in the day. Super place if you want a few drinks before the end of the night. Okay, Say hello to the Gascoigne tree. <laughs> so we're in Canton Pop right now, the best place in uh, the best place in Livia. We have a story in the uh, locals. Is it like in English. Too shy to tell. Oh, okay. In Cantona. Apart from Cantona, there is a football guest coming cup, which is awarded to the guys who have fallen asleep the most in the history of the of the pub. <laughs> this guy here, Sergei, he has his own tree of Gaston cups. That's all him. That's the one. He's not asleep. He's just reading this book. So just to honor him, a separate tree for him. And these are the guys, these are the, the separate guys, like who got the most. This is Kate right there. And this is the backside of it as well. The gas going cup. There are quite a few people, as you see, have the gas going cup. But you, you know who got the most. You don't want that title. None of oh, us do. I've been there many times. <laughs>